extend winter and and the beautiful plasma therapy therapy that we also have in house of metal cathedral so the place you're looking at is um we're close to the ceiling of the old church and it's an um we've been here as artists now for over 14 years and we're building a regenerative society and our opinion is basically that all the tools and the answers are there to build a society where everyone and everything can flourish. And to make that accessible uh, to everybody, I think that's the real work and the effort we should do in this time and moment, uh, 2023 and the years to come, to make sure that the next generation will have a place to live in and to also flourish and not be part of the digital uh, digitalization, but can really yeah, live life from their heart and feel that and be healthy. And of course, that's another big problem in our society. There's a lot of toxicities from all levels, whether it's water, air, uh, land, food, etc. And of course, as healers, we have to deal with that. And um, we'd like to use every possibility that we have without toxicities and to heal the body and the living system that we're part of. So Metal Cathedral has various domainas. Uh, we have a lot of knowledge about natural law and jurisdiction. We have knowledge about healing in all uh, aspects of uh, regenerate uh, ourselves. We work in labs. We have knowledge of water, frequencies, um, and sound. So we wish you, uh, yeah, we, you're very welcome to come and venture this place. And we mainly make it accessible together with young people. So soon we're gonna have a benefit, a sound concert on the 24th of September. You're very welcome as well to see what we do and how we make things happen. And one of the things to make a life and re, yeah, regeneration possible is, um, is to work with the plasma uh, and the world that you have created then. So um, Iris, me and Sylvia will also really try to ask and sometimes stop you then uh, in the sense of, oh, that's too complex. What are you talking about, mate? Uh, I don't understand the word. Um, so sometimes we'll slow you down a little bit if that's okay with you, because you're a brain full of uh, enormous amounts of uh, knowledge. And we like to seriously tap into it to understand how we can use the terrify in a proper way um, and understand the world of plasma. I don't know from the audience, maybe um, how many healers there are and what the, what the DNA is of the audience. Um, Daniel, uh, healer, yeah, wave. If you're a healer, if you work with that, yeah, that's great. So majority actually. Um, we have question hour as well. In here, there's also healers, but also accountants, uh, mind you. Um, and I don't know, you two are also working in the healing? Uh, not, yet. not yet. So you're interested to yeah. do so. Great. Very good. You, you as well. Yeah? Yeah. I see. A, I might be interested. Sound. Um, and behind me also. So I reckon uh, Iris, is, Iris is on a oh, fantastic welcome. Healer? Are you someone who heals as well? Where, are you having a practice as a healer? Oh, fantastic. Another healer is just coming in, ladies and gentlemen. Fantastic. <laughs> so, um, Iris, I give the word first to, to Iris and speak in the mic. Yeah. yeah, so tonight we have two speakers, uh, two professionals, uh, one as a pr practitioner and the other one as the inventor um, genius. Um, and we're going to start off the evening with Sylvia, who's sitting here next beside me. And Sylvia has her practice in uh, the Netherlands in Sandford. And it's a multidisciplinary uh, practice. Um, she uses the Terrify, uh, the multi-wave oscillator, guns, uh, sound healing. Well, probably uh, it's best if I give you the mic. Um, because Sylvia is going to share her experiences as a practitioner working with the Terrify and um, also talking or explaining a little bit on how she works with it, but also on 
the reactions of the people that come to you. Yeah. yeah? Okay, so I hand you the mic. Hello, everybody. My name is Sylvia Hoevenaar from the Netherlands, and my practice is in Zandvoort. It's close to the beach, which is already more healthy than a city. <laughs> and um, yeah, I don't have so long my practice, only a couple of years, three, three years actually. And before that, I did totally something else. And why I got into this is because a couple of years ago, I broke my back and my friend, she borrowed me the multi-wave oscillator. So it healed so quickly my back and my injury in my own bones of my back that I was quite shocked. Wow, I need to dive into frequency healing. And also somebody borrowed me uh, light healing. So I used light healing and frequency healing with my own broken back. And within five weeks, I was in a festival dancing again. Um, so yeah, that was quite uh, amazing. But I uh, kept having a migraine for a very long time. And then no doctor could help me. So then again, I went looking for the energetic healing. And then I got into uh, dent plasma came onto my uh, in my life so actually by use ne I, I needed to have it for my own body the universe gave those healing abilities on my on my path so because I was so uh, fascinated and passionate about what other modalities could do to me of course you want to learn more about it so now I have my practice and in my practice I work with uh, the multi-wave oscillator, which is an amazing uh, device. Then I also use um, sound healing, but in a way that I first scan somebody's voice. And through the voice, I can also read what the emotional baggage and patterns are, why a person gets sick. Because in my practice, I use combinations of plasma frequencies and um, yeah, the consciousness about why you get sick. And because I use the combination of those three, um, it is very strong. Because for me, the basis is always why are you sick and what is needed to heal. So, and then later on, plasma came on my um, path. First with the plasma of the Cashew Foundation. And I also had amazing experiences in healing, which I tell a little bit more later. And only recently, then winter came on my path. And this was because I was already in the plasma field with uh, making the alchemical plasma energies. And then somebody said to me, oh, do you know Dan Winter? I said, no, never heard of it. And then I went uh, on YouTube and then I was amazed by the knowledge of uh, Dan. And I was like, oh my God, this is really something for me. <laughs> and then um, he said, do you know the terrify? I said, no. And then I went to your website and then I thought, okay, this is interesting because I was working with plasma from the violet ray. The violet ray is also a plasma device, which I use combined with the multi-wave oscillator. And I already noticed incredible, incredible healing, uh, healing um, results because why do they, why, why does it, is, why is, why is it so beneficial? Huh? I, I've seen so many people heal in my practice and sometimes it looks like a miracle. But why does plasma work for me? And why does the Terrify work? Why does the Violet Ray work? Why does plasma from the Kesha Foundation work? I see that why do people get sick? They, those are actually always a couple of things in the body what is not working or why it's not healing. So for for example, people, they have a lot of baggage in their body and they carry a lot of weight, like emotional baggage. That is a disturbing frequency that you carry in the matter of your body. So for me, it is important to release the baggage, to heal the nervous system, because if a person is always in anxiety and has a stressed nervous system because of all that is experienced your body cannot heal also why doesn't a person regenerate why do they get older so fast 
that's because they don't have enough oxygen or the electricity is very low, like you have a low battery. So what I noticed when I used the multiwave oscillator or the Terrify is that the people after a session feel so much more energetic, relaxed. Re re they have uh, so much more energy in their body that I see that when a person doesn't heal, they don't have enough energy in their body. That's why they can't regenerate, because if you don't have enough energy, your body cannot regenerate. If your nervous system is out of balance because you're always tensed, you cannot relax, you cannot regenerate. So for me, healing is working on the nervous system and working on the regeneration and the energetic level of the person, but also on the electromagnetic communication in the body. So if you work on those um, subjects in the body, and the Terrify helps incredibly with that, Plasma works incredibly with that. And also the other devices where I work with, and that's why I work with a combination of them. Uh, I see even people after one session healing. So a couple of weeks ago, I had a guy and he had a problem with a smell. A smell, his smell was gone, his scent was gone. After one session, his scent was back. A lady, she had a brain um, hemorrhage. I, you call it the brain hemorrhage in Tia. So saying, after one session, she says, wow, I'm so back in my body again. I feel I'm renewed. Not completely healed, of course. But after one session of Terrify, she felt that so much happened to her that she was so more energetic, much more calm. She felt more in her body back again. How long was she under the terrify? A half an hour. So two cycles of nine minutes, or how do you do? Uh, well, actually, the terrify needs to be a few minutes switched off. But uh, yeah, I do it a little bit longer without having a break because I am. I will. <laughs> I'm always a person who do my own way. So um, that's why I keep them half an hour in the terrify. Maybe it's not the right way, but. I see it, it helps. And um, I even had a person, uh, she went traveling to other dimensions. She went to mermaid dimensions where she could speak to them. I had a person who said, my Kundalini is rising because of the plasma. So it really depends how sensitive a person is, what they experience. Because if a person is much more in their stress and fight and flight system, you cannot feel so as a person who is relaxed. So it all depends what your sensitivity level is, what you experience. So also when you work with a Terrify or a Multiwave, never have a um, expectation. expectation. Just go in open. And what I also tell the person, put an intention in the plasma field, what you want it to do for you. Just give a a wish, for example. Where do you want the plasma to go for you? So you can also visualize that the plasma fields go into that body part where you need it the most. And even if you don't know, just to put the intention, my body is healed completely. So um, I also work with uh, healing frequencies when they are in the session, like 432 or 4528. So their, their journey uh, is also strengthened by healing frequencies or with smells that also help the body. And they also give a mask when they are in the Terrify because when they go deeply inside of themselves, which we hardly never do anymore, the body can receive the healing frequencies much better than you are watching around you and talking or thinking about everything. So for me, the experience giving people the Terrify is... Um, yeah, also important. But um, yeah, the experience for me combining plasma from the Cashier Foundation, and that's not really from the Cashier Foundation, it's just I make it myself. So I make my own alchemy with plasma. I combine the Terrify, I combine the frequencies of the multiwave, and with that combination, including the consciousness why you're getting sick, miracles happen.
miracles happen. So I believe plasma is the history of medicine and the future of medicine. And I think every physical therapist, what's the name? Physician? Physical therapist needs to work with plasma. Even my father, who didn't believe in it, he, he bruised his ribs. I said, okay, then, now you have to listen to me. Lay down, just listen. So I work with the, the plasma field from Terrify, the, the plasma from the violet ray, and the compress of my alchemy with plasma energy. The next day, he, he texted me. He says, I don't feel anything anymore. All the pain was gone. After a week, with severe pain, he couldn't move hardly. It was gone. Maybe so, you could reactivate the camera there. Your camera seemed to have gone out. Sorry. Ah, No, yeah, yeah, good. Your story is so helpful. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have so many stories with incredible healing. And uh, even today, I had a client, a Dutch client, amazing guy. And uh, I want to tell this story because it's it's so good. Uh, I had a workshop. I gave alchemy workshops, workshop about how to make plasma energy in the liquids. And uh, the woman had a daughter. He, she has a cat and the cat needed to go to the doctor to get a, um, actually to be asleep because he had a blood disease. So he couldn't be saved anymore by the doctor. When he got his uh, injection to be actually, to be slept, slept in, slept in <laughs> the, the cat jumped off the table of the deer doctor, animal doctor. And then they said, oh, maybe he doesn't want to die yet. So they took him home. The woman had my workshop in the day. She, she took my plasma water with her. And you can also make plasma water with a Terrify. You put water in a Terrify machine. And then she gave it to the cat. And the cat drank the water. And he didn't eat for weeks. That night, he started eating again. And he ate again the next day and the next day. And in a couple of weeks, he was like a normal cat again. And then her husband, he said, okay, now this is weird. Now I should believe you <laughs> a little bit more. And then he went to me, to my practice, uh, because he had heart rhythmia disturbance. So we looked into his reason why this is happening in your body, because there's an emotional reason to it, why you have heart rhythmia disturbances. So healing for me starts with consciousness, why you have this. That is the key. And then you give the body what it needs to heal. So regeneration, uh, electromagnet electromagnetic um, improvement, uh, you fill up the battery. So he went inside, and there was the guy I told before who got the smell back, but he was today also in the, ter in the, um, in the multi-wave, and he says, my heart rhythmia is gone. It's just gone after two sessions. He felt so much better. And he uses plasma energy also to drink. So the three things, plasma, multi-wave frequencies, scalar frequencies, and the emotional uh, consciousness. That is the key. So I believe that all doctors should work like this. Why you are sick? What does your body need? And boost your energetic and oh, your own plasma fields because we are plasma. Our, every cell is plasma. Our whole field is plasma. So if you work with a balanced field of plasma, if it's a terrify, you put a person in this field, the body heals itself. And I see it. I see it with my mother. I see it with my father. I see it with friends. I see it with clients. I see it with animals. You cannot believe if I'm in the plasma field, my cat jumps between the terrify. He wants to be with with me when I put the terrify on and I, I I don't I never actually advertise for animals but a lot of clients come to me and they say can I bring my dog can I bring my cat I, I said of course you can bring them just take them because you are in it yourself anyway so my uh, my my friend has a dog and uh, he had a big um um what is a gezwel 
big infection in his mouth, very big, so he couldn't eat. And the doctor wanted to operate the, the big, like the infection, like it's, it's a big lump, swollen, very, very big, and he couldn't eat. So I said, use plasma water. Spray the plasma water in his mouth on the infection and just give him this every day, a couple of times a day. Two days later, it was gone. <laughs> so no operation needed. So I am a firm believer of plasma healing because I see every week, every day results with animals and humans. So That's here I have uh, a lot of uh, reviews, many pages, many pages of people um, uh, writing, writing it on my site or online on Google. Ah, and I have one good story. It's also nice because I have a client. He has a Thai slime sickta. What is that in? It's a very, um, they say it's autoimmune disease. The doctors and you cannot get old very uh, with this. It's like you, you cough very much saliva and your lungs are very uh, damaged. And uh, yeah, normally the doctors give a lot of um, antibiotics your whole life. And they say, oh, you don't get old with this. So I said, okay, we're going to treat it different. We're going to work on the emotional cause, why you have this. And it is really uh, a specific pattern why it is this and uh, then we get ga I gave him plasma water and I gave him Ormus which is also plasma water but made from salts so you can also use the Terrify and put water in it so water has memory water you can program with the plasma so you give the water of the plasma to your body six months later he says I don't have complaints anymore I stop my medication and I grow extremely in my consciousness and I can go to the gym again which he couldn't so for me then yeah I'm so happy that I work with the plasma and uh, you are here to help us with the technical and the science part of of what it actually does to me or I mean to the people who use it or want to use it because there's so many possibilities in healing when you use plasma and of course, the plasma from Terrify is combined with geometry, is combined with the Tesla coil. So it's a combination of things. And I'm also a fan of geometry, sacred geometry, because our DNA is sacred geometry. And when you work with sacred geometry, the body remembers again the harmonic resonances of that. Um, so yeah, for me, sacred geometry is also very important. So yeah. Super. Can you maybe uh, name the website where, where people can find you and uh, the reviews of the people who come to you? Yeah, my company name is Key to Health for Body, Mind and Soul um, because it's a combination of, of all three. So it's not only the physical. We are energetic. We are emotional. So that's what we need to look at all three of them to become harmonious. To, because if you work on the energetic part, the physical part will, will join. And you, you have a website? I have a website, yeah. It's called key2health.nl. Oh, great. Um, yes. And um, yeah, I also give workshops to people how to make plasma energy themselves. Uh, I give lectures about plasma healing. I uh, help people become more autonomous in self-healing, in what they can do themselves, how the body works instead of symptomatic. Uh, we Yeah, it's like what does the body need how does it work how can you heal yourself so i see a big revolution in holland uh because i yeah inspire a lot of people with the plasma healing and i uh, believe that we are in a tipping point with medical people like nurses i have also nurses in my uh, workshops or people from the water uh, governmental systems and i believe that the women are a big role in changing the knowledge to the yeah the medicine or the med medicinal people like for example the CEOs or the doctors or the how say you chirurgen surgeons so I see that the women are much more open to plasma healing or to frequency healing or sound healing or alchemical healing and yeah it's good to see that a lot of uh, people go come to my workshops 
who have regular jobs, but they are using it themselves and they spread the knowledge themselves as well because they feel the plasma in the terrify or the violet ray or the, the GANs and they spread it again. So I see there's a big ripple happening in plasma healing. That's wonderful, Sylvia. You uh, you radiate pure and shareable intention. It's it's all good. Yes, I am. <laughs> you inspire us. As... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I have a lot of um, great. Uh, even my mother, she has a. Uh, Who's now? Uh, her hip is not. Yeah. not working anymore it's uh yeah the, the yeah, deteriorated the hip is deteriorated and i gave uh the plasma water in a water bag which you can fill with water so i put it under a bed the water plasma and she says i don't have pain anymore <laughs> she sleeps on it she sleeps on the plasma water yeah and i now uh made my own med bed i bought, bought a uh refillable uh actually it's an air bed but i fill it with plasma water <laughs> And I gave it to a guy who is now sick uh, and he needs it. But I've slept on it for two nights. And I was really, my dreams became, even yeah. I got messages in my dream. And I was, in a few minutes, I was gone, sleeping. It, it, those are wonderful stories. And I'm hoping that by sharing some of the principle behind how it works in a very non-theoretical but practical way, we can understand how to use these tools better. So and you you set the perfect stage for that. I thank you, Sylvia. Yeah, good. <laughs> it's perfect. Um, actually, while we're on the subject of the water, so we want what we want to get to is a a generalized um, a generalized principle of how it works. That would be the idea. Uh, good. But uh, even specifically in the case of the water, you know that the hydrogen bond at the center of the water. H2O, and also the center bond of every DNA ladder rung is hydrogen. And the hydrogen geometry is the beginning of the equation on which the Therify is based. And again, what this frequency series is doing is accelerating uh, what's called charge collapse, the implosion, which that is the amount of inertia moving centripetally toward the center of the tornado. And as the inertia going toward the implosive center of the tornado vortex called charge collapse. As that inertia of implosion towards center increases, that is what in general increases the self-organizing negentropic, the healing force. So because the reason is because as the charge converges toward that center with more and more centripetal force, the waves that do not fit the symmetry the discipline of symmetry of that center are canceled. So the, then, the, then. Broader, the broader the spectrum of the implosion at the center of that vortex, it's called charge this, collapse. And uh, the centrifugal way, can you, so this is the vortex you're talking? That, that you, essentially uh, all of physics is a name for string theory vortex wormholes. For example, the atom exists because there are charged tornadoes going to center from the electron shells to the nucleus. And the geometry of the charged tornadoes <laughs> that make, for example, gold and water look exactly precisely like this. So that, and hydrogen particularly is specifically this geometry. So the little vortex that go towards center, if they're collapsing efficiently, which is to say centripetally, the inertia moving toward that center is what determines how self-organizing, negentropic, and healing they are, because all the charge that goes through that center has to be, is forced to be in the phase discipline, in the harmonic series of what can pass through that center non-destructively. So any wave that's out of phase with that center is canceled. So that creates a harmonic series, which is self-organizing, which is negentropic. So the healing exists because of literally the implosion. And the amount of implosion, the technical term, is called charge collapse. Now, my new book on that subject, plonkfire.com, which is the center of all this work, actually. It's called Plonk, P-L-A-N-C-K, fire, P-H-I-R-E, plonkfire.com, that if you start with Planck, the musical key signature of every wave in physics, 
and you simply multiply by multiples of golden ratio called fractality perfected, you get a nest that looks like this that predicts the geometry of hydrogen, the geometry of almost every biological harmonic, and, and actually the central geometry of all orbital mechanics, because it's also how gravity is made and how consciousness is made. So consciousness, gravity, and healing are all caused, and I say specifically caused, by charge collapse, literally charge implosion. And in fact, that's not new information. Einstein and most of physics has long agreed that charge collapse is a cause of gravity and that charge collapse is a cause of consciousness. My contribution to that conversation was to discover the cause of charge collapse, therefore the cause of consciousness, gravity, and negentropy and healing. So to make to make this charge collapse work, so let's, let's take a very practical example. Uh, <clears throat> the Therify plasma cloud is really an example of something that's well known in medicine called negative ion wind. You said your center, Sylvia, is, is near the beach. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> uh, it, it's well known in hospitals that the side, the hospital rooms on the side of the hospital facing the beach, <laughs> the healing rate is measurably faster. Uh, let's scratch our heads and figure out why. Well, it is because there is negative ion wind. A negative ion is a small black hole in one way. It's electrically centripetal. Now, if you have a huge cloud of negative ions, if that cloud is big enough, think of the cloud of plasma called Therify, <laughs> then that cloud becomes almost mindful. It's like your pet puppy dog. And the cloud of plasma around the Therify, if the environment is natural and there's nothing to destroy the negative ion winds like electrosmog or big metal things, then that cloud will float there even when the device is off. And eventually, <laughs> you know, it's like your pet puppy dog or your pet kitten. If it likes you, that cloud will go and run its motor and it will heal you. But the cloud of plasma literally is the beginnings of self-aware. So if, for example, if someone comes in the room with a negative attitude, actually, it's best to gently suggest they come back a different day because, <laughs> because you know, just like ball lightning is so famous for responding to telepathy, the cloud of living negative ions, the cloud of plasma made by the Therify, if the room is, you know, if you got fresh air, you've got natural material, limited metal, that cloud will hang out there and become bigger and bigger and more and more self-aware and treat it like your pet puppy dog, you know? <laughs> and so the principle of makes what makes that plasma cloud self-aware and healing is that it's implosively centripetal. And anything that helps it be centripetal uh, helps it be healing. So let's take other examples from Sylvia's very useful conversation. Let's talk about, for example, the Lakowski multi-wave oscillator that Sylvia mentioned. The Lakowski harmonics are notoriously used golden ratio. Uh, Lakowski initially did not know how to tune them to Planck. He did not know what phase conjugation was, and he did not know how to use opposing pairs. And that's also true of Priory, who is a plasma device antecedent to therify. He did not know what phase conjugation was either and didn't, didn't know that you needed opposing pairs. But in both cases, Lukowski and Antoine Priory, they used harmonic series that they got by uh, trial and error from Reif and uh, Lukowski and Tesla, which were healing. And as they got closer and closer, refine those frequencies, when we investigated the frequencies Antoine Priory, for example, used, which he got from Lakowski and Reif, it turns out that the majority of those frequencies, by only their trial and error, actually fit my equation, Planck times golden ratio, meaning implosion, meaning charge collapse, meaning negentropy. So we took that principle and, well, I won't say perfected it, but we moved it greatly ahead because Antoine Priory used about four, five harmonics that were close to golden ratio times Planck, but he didn't know, know how to use opposing pairs. And with, then we mixed that with an RF frequency at half a million volts. And then we, so we're feeding 
the low frequency infrasound harmonic series, Planck times Golden ratio, the same exact frequencies that Patrick uses in the Flame and Sound Bliss binaural beat frequencies at flameandmind.com. That's the same equation that drives the infrasound that we feed then modulate on the higher RF radio frequency sub megahertz. And then we put that complex wave, infrasound modulated and RF, into a bifiller Tesla coil, which dumps that frequency out, changes it in two ways. One, increases the voltage to about half a million volts. And two, it splits that complex wave in two harmonics, which are exactly 180 degrees out of phase, called phase conjugate or implosive. And that's the half million volt wave, that complex wave, we dump out to the plasma tubes. Now, the practical implications here are that half a million volts in that little white wire is very much like your electric fencer for horses. You don't want to touch it, but it won't kill you. But it, you know, <laughs> but if if you properly isolate the path of that high voltage white wire, for example, the white wire does not want to be near anything metal uh, or even anything conductive because the energy in the high voltage called corona high voltage wire travels around the wire and not in it. That also means that the the coil, the bifiller Tesla coil in the big black case, has a low frequency harmonic magnetic output, which is tremendously powerful for healing. In fact, the low frequency output of that magnetic black box bifiller Tesla coil is itself documented by my friend Elizabeth Rauscher to be profoundly healing. So the magnetic field of that black box is very helpful to your patient as well. So the point is though, that if that black box is sitting on a metal floor, it's gonna dissipate that corona and weaken the field. So that's why the black box wants to be sitting up off the floor. For example, if there's metal rebar in the concrete of the floor, unless the floor is a good insulator. So those are the things that you pay attention mm -hmm. to. It's the same thing that you call astral hygiene, uh, taking care of your aura. So the astral hygiene of your therapy means you're making sure that the corona is not leaking. And the other thing is that the the room in which the Tesla, the Therify is located, uh, the presence of fresh air is actually critical because the Therify will then implode, uh, able to implode more capacitance if the air has charge in it. Whereas if the air, for example, is depleted of capacitance, for example, air which has been through the aluminum fins of an air conditioner have very little capacitance left and doesn't serve implosion very well. That's also why you yawn in air conditioned air because the capacitance is gone from that air, depleting your body's ability to absorb oxygen actually. So you, want, you want fresh air, but you don't want any wind. And there, these are some things about the hygiene of Therify. Yes, yes. Yeah, question. Sure, go ahead. Uh, you talked about the low frequency. Yes. Is, can you be spe specific on the frequency next to uh, airing the room is a very, uh, there's a lot of practitioners here that use the Terrify. So really learning to know how it works, what frequencies it gives would also be nice to understand. Yes. The, um, if if you look at the, the, the webpage on the physics behind Therify, which is therify.net slash static, on that page, you actually see the low frequency harmonics that are used. So the the, the the RF, the radio frequency, just sub megahertz that we use is technically uh, proprietary, but if you have a spectrum analyzer, you can find it out quickly enough. But the infrasound spectra is published right there on the How Therify Works page, therify.net slash static. And that harmonic series starts with 2.78, 4.5, 7.29, 11.8, 19.06, 13.88, 49.97, 80.85. For example, the 49.97, 50 hertz is the most common mentioned healing frequency in all of the cancer literature by actual inquiry. So that low frequency cascade is identical with the Schumann harmonic series, that causes the Earth Gaia to be negentropic, which is identical with the brainwave harmonic series that causes bliss, which is identical with the infrasound bliss binaural beat sound, most powerful, world's most powerful bliss binaural beat. So that infrasound cascade is perfect by equation. It's called the perfected uh, uh, phase conjugate pump wave. It's actually how and why, for example, pyramids 
make the energy for global wireless power, that same frequency series. So maybe I did too much answering your question. <laughs> Well, then you, you said um, you compared the terrify to the multi-wave oscillator yes. and the work yes. of uh, Nikola Tesla and Lakovsky. And um, can yes. you maybe explain how the terrify is like different from uh, those earlier technologies? Yes. Well, it's really, for example, in the very first launch event we did for Therify in Perpignan, there were two or three professional full-time uh, Lukowski multi-wave oscillator healers, they're present. And they checked it out very carefully. And they both said the same thing, that Therify had the same kind of feeling, but much more powerful and much faster. And actually the EE device and other devices, a similar kind of story. And it's actually quite simple to understand why the Therify is perhaps faster and more powerful than the multi-wave oscillator. Uh, so what that means is probably shorter sessions are needed. Although I actually think a half hour is quite okay, by the way. But anyway, the reason Therify is more powerful than the multi-wave oscillator is simple. The spectrum of phase conjugation is much broader spectrum. So the, the multi-wave oscillator obviously is limited to the electromagnetic harmonics. There's no optical component and there's very little infrasound component, uh, particularly there's no optical. So the, the pine cones kissing noses, which is called phase conjugation, it looks like a caduceus, of Therify is much broader spectrum. And the other thing is the phase conjugation is much more accurate, tuned to Planck by equation much more accurately. So this makes the Therify more powerful. And frankly, there are ways to make it even more powerful yet, <laughs> but you might need billion dollar licenses to play with gigahertz. But you know, there's lots of things we could do. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, the t the the lamps they uh, they have like three inlets, or I don't know how to say it, but at the back of the lamp there are three yes. parts that's sticking out. Yes, is that uh, what is causing the phase conjugation, or is it attributing to the phase conjugation? The um the phase conjugation is primarily caused by the phase conjugate harmonics of the infrasound and the RF component. Also, the phase conjugation is profoundly served by the fact that the noble gases are phase conjugate optically in their optical spectrum emissions. Now, with regard to your question, the, the plasma tube, we should have a picture, and most people have seen that, but the plasma tube and their vortex shaped of the Therify have three little test tube shaped nubs uh, that emerge at the, at the back end where the power is fed. And those three um, little tubes that are where the copper sleeve fits over to feed a half million volts. They're placed in there at a slight angle for the purpose of directing the input voltage into a vortex geometry, intentionally asymmetrical, that is steering the vortex. So they're intended to direct the input voltage into the beginnings of a tornado actually, So that, which, we could serve phase conjugation indirectly. Basically, on certain occasions, people have actually observed the shape of that plasma uh, vortex inside the tube to actually look like a vortex tornado. In fact, to form a bit of a snake, depending on many conditions having to do with the impedance in the room and the temperature. And by the way, uh, you know, if the temperature is too warm in the room, it can slightly inhibit. But what would would can actually greatly inhibit is very high moisture levels. If there's very high moisture in the room, it uh, dramatically actually can reduce the effect of the plasma because it dissipates the negative ion cloud. And there are Therify centers who exist in a high humidity environment who actually use dehumidifiers to uh, decrease that humidity, increasing the effect of the plasma cloud. And by the way, those kinds of things, and also uh, sometimes people use a fan on the tubes, uh, are perhaps useful between sessions, but I recommend that such devices be off during sessions, like a fan, for example, because fractionating the air, for example, even wind in the room is not good because the plasma cloud is literally blown away. <laughs> mm. Um, yeah. Yeah, th there was one more little point about Sylvia's conversation, which is relevant to, to, in terms of understanding the principle behind this, which is absolutely charge collapse. Remember, as the implosive 
vortex tornado gains implosive inertia toward center, that implosive charge collapse is the neg entropy, it is the healing, it is the self-organizations, and it is critical. And what serves that is grounding, accurate turning to Planck, all these things like grounding, hydration afterwards. But to understand that principle, let's look at another part of Sylvia's very useful introduction here. Sylvia is referring to her work with Cachet's GANS. And that's a very useful analog to understand a little bit more of the principle. Uh, the uh, nanomaterials that Cachet is using, the best ones, uh, you, in other words, you find a way, particularly with the palladium group metals, gold, palladium, and platinum, to get those atoms to stabilize in the monoatomic unbonded state so that the atom looks like this. <laughs> And by the way, carbon has a form called fullerene, which does the same thing. And when the atom looks like this, and this is literally precisely the chemical model of the SPDF completed subshells that define the stability of the platinum group metals and the noble gases, the DF subshell complete, dodeci cosa, they look like this, literally precisely in your physical chemistry universal university class. If the teacher is doing their work, they must show you this because this is how it works. So what happens is that if that gold or atom is persuaded to stabilize in a mono atom state, and you know, the arc between the two gold wings in the Ark of the Covenant was helpful. <laughs> now, in the Tesla's case, it was a carbon arc. So the, the arc is a spark gap that helps that atom to stabilize in the mono atom state. It was originally called mono Ormes, the spice or holy communion was some of the names for that uh, white powder gold. And uh, so nanomaterials persuaded to be stable in a, a monoatomic state increase the charge collapse efficiently at the atomic level. In my recording I did about our, I've been in Cache's living room several times. You can see the film at fractalfield.com slash cold plasma. Cache's problem is he's relatively good at atomic physics, but his electrical engineer doesn't know what phase conjugation is. But the major problem is they don't know how to make the nanomaterials with sufficient purity levels. And that's where our team it's called nanotech confidential, this long story. But the point is the principle of those nanomaterials is precisely charge collapse. Now those nanomaterials engender charge collapse at the atomic level, but if you put them in an array, such as a noble gas, or then you get the longer wavelengths also imploding, and then the charge collapse becomes more broad spectral as in the case of Therify. But those nanomaterials are quite useful and the understanding of how to make them. For example, if we could make carbon nano 99% pure, every other form of energy and transport on this planet would look like the Stone Ages. <laughs> and we're, we're almost there, long story. But studying those nanomaterials is very useful and appropriate. Our discussion, fractalfield.com slash cold plasma. Uh, any questions? I, yeah, can I ask a question? Um, do you feel it's, it's relevant to also involve the platonic solids? Um, like in the in the monoatomic arena, <laughs> I well, mean, yeah, that, is it the same? Yeah, it's precisely the same. So that's what we're saying is that if you look at goldenmean.info slash creation, the uh, physical chemistry of the SPDF suborbitals of the electron shells, all of the conversation of what is modern chemistry is the geometry of these electron shells, and the SPDF subshells, the S subshell is literally the shape, <laughs> that's what it is. And the pi suborbital is a tetra cube. And the DNF suborbitals are dodeci cosa, literally the shape. So yes, the platonic solids is the answer, as it also was for Kepler, who correctly said <laughs> that planetary orbitals are based on platonic solids. And he was right because platonic solid nesting is only possible using golden ratio, which stabilizes charge collapse, which is the cause of stable gravity and stable atmosphere and stable negentropy. So yes, it's about the platonic solids for sure. And the and, and important point being that you can't get that tetra cube in here inside the dodeci cosa without using golden ratio. And you can't get the dodeci cosa dodeci infinite 3D fractal nest 
in any other way than golden ratio. So golden ratio perfected charge collapse defines the platonic solidness, which defines all of chemistry, including not the geometry of the electron shells, but the geometry of the hadrons, nucleus, nucleus, yes. and protons. I, think, nucleus. It's all I, think, everybody, I think everybody's very uh, thankful that this is a recording and we can play it back over and over and over again, because you're, you're, there's so much information in every two seconds that you're talking. <laughs> The, the term alchem as in chemistry is specifically a name for that principle. Alchem literally means access to the black hole. So there is no a higher meaning of the term chem as in chemistry and alchemy than specifically access to charge collapse. Why that is the name for alchemy and chemistry and ancient Egypt. Um, we're almost like at the, uh, we're gonna open the, the chat or uh, that people can start asking questions also. Um, but before we do that, um, would it be like the right comparison to make it more like uh, easier to understand and more visible if we include the, the work of um, Masuo Emoto and his water crystals, because they show what self-organization is and they show the hexagonal um, quality of, of the hydrogen uh, atoms and um, um, is it, like the harmony that we can see in in these water crystals. They they show what health is, right? They sh they show self organization. Yes, it's a beautiful thing. We knew and loved Professor Emoto for years. Worked with him in Barcelona, and our friend Georg ran his lab in Europe. Uh, and it was a beautiful work. They were showing that when you freeze the water it will freeze in the geometry of the capacitance of the crystal. Unfortunately, Emoto didn't know what science was, didn't know what chemistry was, didn't know what electric field was. Frankly, he was a poet only. But the good thing was that he interested many people in this. For example, he didn't realize when he tried to replicate his work in a different lab in Japan, and he had huge electrosmog problems, it would not replicate. But to, to really understand this. But now there are people, our friend Vera is doing this in New Zealand, doing beautiful work here. And uh, and yes, the point is, it's called, originally in Steiner works, called sensitive crystallization processes in the blood. And it just means that the crystallization geometry will be the geometry of the weak electric field, literally the plasma field. Yeah. Okay, I, uh, I think I'm going to sit at the computer and... Um that we are going to give everybody a chance to ask your question to both Sylvia and Dan. Great. Yeah, so. Go ahead, Iris. Yeah, if you want to ask a question, you can unmute yourself. Anybody here in the audience who has a question to Dan? Sylvia, I have a question for you just briefly, Sylvia. Uh, uh, oh. Uh, Sylvia, that would do that first. yes, go ahead, Dan. Sylvia, when you're treating water with the Therify, some people have said it works a little bit better in glass bottles rather than in plastic. And also, I think in Paul's trials, they realize that it doesn't take long, like five or 10 minutes for yeah. the water to absorb the charge. Is that your experience? Yeah, I use glass as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't know how long, so I, I leave it half an hour and then I think it's right. Uh -huh. Yeah. And the physics is, again, that that water is gaining inertia towards charge collapse tuned right to the center of hydrogen. And that implosive capacitance is the principle. Yeah. And that happens as well in the blood, of course, because yes. you're all water <laughs> inside. So Exactly. And the DNA is the same hydrogen at the center. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead with the other questions. Um, Peter? Yes, hello, Dan. I want to ask you, how, how long stays it in the water? Ah, the charge. The charge, yes. Yes. Um, you know, it's not unlike the question of our theimploder.com, where we put 
implosive capacitance in water using a perfected vortex, the imploder.com. And we did experiments there, and we can keep the charge in the water for days, but not months, actually. And we even learned more about what, what affects how long the charge stays in the water. For example, uh, high, high temperature or high pressure uh, or even shock, mechanical shock, these all reduce the spin density and the solubility. So if the water is kept cool, for example, and stored in an insulator like glass, then the charge will last longer. But I think days, yes, but weeks and months, probably not. That's my, and some people have done some experiments along that line. Would, would copper help to keep the charge? Um, copper is useful to water for other reasons. The geometry of the outer electron shell uh, contributes a, a capacitive geometry, which can be helpful. But copper is a conductor. So, you know, in my view, you know, touching some copper, passing through copper, yes, but storage in copper is probably less than ideal, actually. But that's a pretty complicated question, I think. Uh, then I'm a sound healer now for 30 years and I work with frequencies also. Um, how do you think about to combi uh, combine the plasma and frequencies? Yes, well... Free frequency. Yes, remember that uh, the whole idea for Therify began when we realized what are the perfected implosive healing frequencies. Start yes. with Planck multiplied by golden ratio. And that whole conversation is at fractalfield.com slash implosion sound. It also explains our view with regard to uh, 432 hertz and all these works on what frequencies yeah. are sacred. The issue is which frequencies fit a cascade toward implosion. And uh, Patrick did a major work on that. And Patrick's here with us. And that's all at fractalfield.com slash implosion sound. And that is exactly what drives Therify and our perfected bliss binaural flame and sound from flameandmind.com, which drives Therify. So it is about sound frequencies, absolutely. And tuning them by golden ratio to Planck, we think does idealize the healing in general. And we think we have proof. And do you think the frequencies like the Hertz, uh, like 432, are they still, um, how do you say that? Um... Is it not changing like frequencies that, that they will not be different? Is this always stay the it's same frequency? The Is it adding to the plasma? Yes. Well, in a way, I think that's like, that may be similar to asking the question, does the Schumann resonance change? Yeah. <laughs> actually, yeah. actually, they do. Well, uh, they, they evolve in terms of, modulation around the base tuned frequency 7.29 versus 7.83 yeah. but the 7.83 hertz which divides the speed of light at the circumference of the planet is fixed <laughs> and actually fundamentally the schumann harmonics are fixed and that's why the alpha beta frequencies the brain waves that make bliss are fixed so yeah. when when greg braden and, uh, and others, Drunvalo, who really didn't understand the physics i don't think when they said oh the schumann resonance is getting higher I think they misspoke and the correct, yes. yes, I think the correct electrical engineering language would be to say that the Schumann harmonics are increasing in harmonic inclusiveness. Absolutely. So the yeah. number of overtones which are present, oh yes. And that harmonic inclusiveness defines the, the vitality. I mean, defines how long anything is going to live. You measure the harmonic inclusiveness of your heart and you absolutely predict your immune health. It's strictly medical. You take the harmonic inclusiveness of an electron or a galaxy and you put, or a tree, for example, and you absolutely predict how long it will live. And harmonic okay. inclusiveness is defined by golden ratio times Planck because that allows harmonics to be inclusive. And our language for what, how many dimensions are you in is only a description of how many of those axes of rotation are superposed. Okay, thank you very much. Well, I discovered um, I, I using for only one week <laughs> with the plasma and frequencies, but when you open the meridians, I do this with people, but then with sound forks, and um, I see there there are um, easier that energy comes in. Did I say it good? 
No, I, my English is not so good. No, no. So that, I think it's useful to open the meridians first. Meridians. Me, meridians, you said in English, yes. Meridians, yes. Yeah. Yes. And then uh, put them in the plasma. I think it's a very good combination to yes, work it, with. I think that's a very appropriate and useful thought. Actually, specifically anything that serves to increase relaxation before yes. you enter the plasma is wonderful because it adds yeah. conductivity. Yes. And relaxation is basically charge collapse. And absolutely, the, the people who work with tuning forks, they, yeah. of, they often get close to implosive frequencies. Well, I so, work with crystal forks, even it's, it's higher, I think. But first, I clean the aura fields before I put them on the on the plasma. That's wonderful. And, you know, the theory would say that if you use the spectrum analyzer and then use my equation, all of that becomes tunable. But I yeah. think you're absolutely in the right right track. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you, then. Thank you. Hi, Dan. Sandra. Um, I just bought last year from uh, somebody from Hawaii, like a magnet, like a um, sort of healing um, thing that he came up with. And um, I use that sometimes to hold it with a meditation and things like that. And yeah, I wonder if you ever heard of the of the healing with the, the magnets in that shape or form. Um, that, again, a very useful- the and Deems device, it called. Yeah, though, oh, the, the Deems device. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been, con actually, I've been uh, communicating with the inventor. We like him. He got that from the ETs, by the way. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. But the principle behind the Deems device is almost identical to how I first invented the imploder.com. You took a stack of magnets. Originally, it was toroidal magnets. And then you line up that stack to radically increase the flux density. And, and, the, and the magnets in that case were opposing flux lines to make them compress. And then at the climax point of the stack of that magnet, what they do in the Deems device is put all that magnetic device into a high permissivity, flux permissive metal washer. And that metal washer takes that incredibly high uh, Gauss flux density and puts it into that metal washer, which is toroidal and very flux permissive in such a way that it makes it implosive, massively centripetal, very narrow. So it, it, it creates that implosive centripetal force in a relatively small area. But in that small area, that implosive magnetic, oh yeah, <laughs> very, yeah. very, very powerful. And, and you know, implosive magnetic is the same conversation we we're having, you know, the magnetic spectra. In fact, the magnetic frequencies in the Tesla coil in the black box, part of Therify, those are the exact low frequency magnetics at high Gauss, which Elizabeth Rauscher and FDA trialed proved was pain redu reduction. And then later we showed the frequency signature and we invented the term phase conjugate magnetics. And Elizabeth Rauscher, one of the most famous physicists on the planet, our friend, uh, agreed that we invented phase conjugate magnetics, which is to say implosive magnetics. So it's the same story. You make it centripetal and it becomes self-organizing. Thank you. The, the Deems device is very useful, and we, we want to play with uh, those people. We're we're in conversation. What, what is it called? Deems? Yeah, D E E M S. I forget. D his D name. D E E E M S. Yeah. yeah. Niels got a question. Yes, go ahead. Hi, Dan. Niels here. Um, when not to use the Therify, you just shortly spoke about it uh, when someone is really negative and coming inside. Or what are the stuff that has got iron inside or like a piece of pacemaker or what are stuff or moments that you don't use the Therify if you use the Therify? Yeah, very, in, the, in quote unquote, uh, medical language, that would be called counter. Oh, when not to use. Yeah, counter indications. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, what we said was that if someone has a, a fairly negative attitude the actual plasma cloud is in part repelled. <laughs> so it does mean that a positive attitude is almost required. Uh, and that's understandable because, 
you know, your pet kitten is not going to lie next to you and run its motor and hum and heal you unless it likes you. <laughs> well, the plasma cloud of Therify is, is your pet kitten, no better and no worse. Uh, but so, you, so you, you do need to encourage, obviously, a positive attitude. And there's a thousand reasons for that. It's pretty obvious. But uh, other counterindications, um, actually, um, Therify is a metabolic accelerator. It can increase heart rate and metabolism because charge circulation perfected is metabolism perfected. In fact, charge circulation perfected, which is what cold atmospheric plasma is. And cold atmospheric plasma, by the way, is one of the hottest subjects today in all of conventional medicine. And we just claim that Therify is one of the best ways to make atmospheric plasma without heat called CAP, cold atmospheric plasma, because obviously, even when Th Schauberger's first vortex began to generate voltage from gravity, it was at the moment it spontaneously got colder. So cold plasma is a name for the principle of what can get a plasma cloud circulating without heat. And obviously, if something's spontaneously getting colder, that's pretty much a definition of negentropy. So that being said, charge circulation perfected is, is, the, is the media which is what cold atmospheric plasma is, which is well recognized in medicine. What that means is that if someone has lack of circulation or lack of feeling electrically or blood circulation or charge circulation, either one, if someone is lacking feeling or circulation in one in an extremity somewhere, Therify is often very useful, very useful. However, if someone has high heart rate, high metabolism, lots of buzz, then we suggest start with shorter sessions and also put added emphasis on the need for grounding and hydration afterwards. Remember, the grounding and hydration, why that's so important because that's when the charge implosion, the charge collapse goes to completion only afterwards, really, once the grounding happens. You know, the book Earthing, for example. So, um, you know, counterindications would actually be you really don't want to wear really thick rubber sneakers because <laughs> they prevent grounding. <laughs> you know, read the book Earthing. And other, oh, counter indi other counterindications are mm -hmm. um, that if a person has had relatively recent uh, chemotherapy in cancer treatment, for example, our team in Belgium and elsewhere believes that because the poisons of things like chemotherapy would pour back into the liver too quickly with plasma treatment, that uh, therified plasma treatment is counterindicated in the months after chemotherapy, actually. Meaning counterindicated is not good? That's right. Or... That's right. If somebody has done chemotherapy recently, we recommend either do not do it or a very qualified doctor who understands detox is very much involved in watching. Actually, and of course, we always recommend competent medical advice. We do not give medical advice, and we are. This is not medical advice. This is experimental only. But it stands to reason: if you got all that poison in your blood, and you you go in the plasma cloud, it's going to drop into the liver too quickly. And so that that is a counterindication. Other counterindications would be um, if someone has electronics inside their body. We think high voltage around is just too risky. And again. Medical doctors, Gerald Smith, for example, have done this, but we don't recommend that you use high voltage plasma around people who have electronics inside their body. Now, in terms of metal in the body, um, we have found that we have been able to help lots and lots of people, for example, with titanium implants. We always say, check for discomfort, start with a shorter session. But we know for sure that lots of people with things like titanium implants have benefited from plasma therapy. But we just suggest if there's metal in the body, you know, start with a little shorter session, make sure there's comfort. But that being said, I don't know of anybody who has had discomfort. And so, but the, the theory is quite clear, metal will deplete the plasma cloud. So metal is generally not helpful. So certainly it's best, whoever's entering the Therify, remove all synthetics and remove all metal that you can, you know, a few metal buttons, okay, but as much metal as possible is removed. Uh, synthetics, clothing is removed. Actually, very light clothing is best. 
person needs to be comfortable and warm, but the lighter the clothing, the better and natural clothing for sure. Yeah, the, you asked how many times? People with cancer before the chemo and after the chemo. So I do a lot of with frequencies to put the poison out actually. But how many time you need between for the people can go to the plasma? Right. Um, session, between the sessions. Yeah. Um, you know, how much time do you need to allow after chemotherapy to use Therify? I think that would be a complicated question, and I would refer to a doctor, actually. In general, we originally, they originally said as much as six to 12 months or months you would wait after chemotherapy before using Therify, uh, or either that or you have a very skilled doctor who understands detox in, into the liver uh, uh, because the the you know the metal heavy metals and things and certain and there's some kinds of chemotherapy that don't have heavy metals in the blood and that's why i would recommend a medical person for that conversation but just in general if you're not really medically trained for safety we would recommend as much as six to 12 months or at least six months probably after chemotherapy before using therapy because the risk is great that the detox into the liver would be too rapid and so um, we've heard people uh, treating people with uh, vaccinations, the COVID vaccinations, in the oscillator actually uh, feel pain. Um, how would you uh, advise the treatment for vaccinated people uh, and plasma? Yes. Well, um, again, uh, with the caution here that I cannot and do not give medical advice, but as an electrical engineer, I could give some general uh, thoughts. And that would be that obviously the issues around vaccination have a huge amount to do with circulation problems. It's obvious, the blood clotting story. And obviously, circulation is one of the things that Therify is very, very good at. I mean, charge circulation perfected is blood circulation perfected by definition. In fact, blood is a media for charge. That's what it is. So we can help circulation. Yes. And so we, in, I think there are many, many cases where we, in fact, I know of one personally, Valerie's friend Dominic here, we dramatically helped that older person with the vax detox. Oh, yes. Uh, I think subjectively and anecdotally only, I can report personally, oh, yes, we have dramatically helped people with vaccine side effects. I think there are many other issues, and I may not be competent to comment medically on some of the other issues, but yes. And our work on that and conversation is at goldenmean.info slash holarchy. And it includes Paul's work where he believes and suggested, again, anecdotally, that breaking up things like uh, 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 carbon structures in the blood is served by things like plasma, because obviously that's what increased circulation and what the increased implosion is going to do. It's going to break up things which do not fit implosion. There's lots of reasons to believe we can help those kinds of issues. And by the way, you'll see that at goldenmean.info slash holarchy, our teammates on that issue of natural solutions to vaccine side effects, uh, Joachim Gerlach, who's a global team on this. You, you see that whole conversation and there are international conferences on natural solutions to vaccine side effects for which they recommend Therify also. Uh, goldenmean.info slash holarchy. Their team is at vedicinals.com, just like medicinals, V-E-D-I, vedicinals.com. And basically it's a natural Vedic solution also serving that circulation solution. So we have done a lot of work on that and that's all at goldenmean.info slash Holarchy. Um, I believe, Sylvia, you also have some ex good experiences with plasma and, well, situations that we go like not really perfect. How, how do we solve it? Uh, yeah, now I wanted to ask something else, but what do you, I don't understand what your question is now. Have you treated vaccinated people? Uh, yes, but I use a combination of uh, things. Yes, plasma, I use plasma, I use detoxing, I use uh, Ormus, I use uh, sound, specific sound um, um, healing with uh, with the Acura system. 
So I um I have contact with Hans from Makara, so I I probably you know him as well. And um yeah, so I try to do my best with different things and yeah, you never know if it's all out of the body because I don't uh, research that if the whole vaccine is completely gone because yeah, it's still a little bit mysterious what is gone in what they put in the body. So I tr I see people getting better, but yeah. Yes. I'm not a researcher in the vaccine industry, yeah, so I generally I see, I see benef uh, benefits. Yes, yes, helping circulation in general is helpful for that. But yes, you had another question. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, I have another question. Um, so yeah, I'm curious about your experiences of people or any other uh, doctor or physician or therapist working with Therify. Can you share us other beautiful stories that you want to share with us using the plasma with Therify? Um, well, you know, uh, I am not the most experienced therapist. You, you probably are more experienced. No, but you, have, you have stories. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I do have stories. Uh, actually, uh, we dram dramatically helped Valerie's friend, old, older lady, rather dramatically with her, uh, Alzheimer's symptoms. We were able to help her dramatically. Although unfortunately, because we couldn't continue th that ability to help her was, you know, over a matter of weeks, uh, but it did not last for years because we couldn't keep helping her. But there are many, many stories of helping with Alzheimer's like issues as well. And it's again, obvious because, you know, that brain plaque and the other issues is about charge circulation solutions. So, you know, brain circulation, charge circulation, it's, it's an more than metaphor for what plasma is. So it makes sense that we have helped older people very dramatically many times. And um, we are developing another parallel technology, piezofire.com, and which it takes the whole principle and puts it in a micro, small little piezo device with a super dielectric lens, Shungite effect, uh, piezofire.com, P-H-I-R-E. And uh, you will see soon, and for that, very localized, but very powerful, you know, for example, hernias and things, which Therify is also very useful for. So localized pain in general, uh, you know, we can help in many cases in just a session or two. And it's true that long-term and chronic pain, we can't help everybody, but we've, there's certainly many people that have anecdotally been helped. And, but those longer-term chronic issues typically take, you know, three to six sessions per week for at least a couple of weeks type of thing, usually. So you say three session a week with chronically... Th three to five sessions per week. That's a lot. <laughs> for it, for a week or two, for people uh, who have really long-term chronic issues, yeah, yeah, yeah. is relatively normal. And maybe a half-hour session might be okay. It's, it's true, you want to kind of make sure, usually start with slightly shorter sessions just to be sure that they don't feel... A dizzy or ungrounded that they're still comfortable before you do the longer sessions uh, and pay particularly attention to hydration and grounding you know give them the book earthing and have spring water with lemon in the room and that sort of thing and what I, i'm i have my terrified home of course and uh, if i would go regularly and i don't have any problems in my body um, what would it do to me? Like, would I be needing it in the end or can it? Yeah. Okay. Well, can you, is what does it? Problem? Yeah. Is there, what does it do to me if you don't have any problems and I go too much, for example, um, I, I only go once a week. Yes. I think then looking at you, you get younger. How, how many times do you go under the plasma? Can you share that with us? Yeah. I, you know, I, I think, uh, I think yeah. I've had COVID about twice and I think it saved my life. <laughs> but uh, uh, remember, I started out with 30 years of Kundalini and Kundalini is essentially what Therify is on steroids <laughs> and Therify definitely accelerates Kundalini. And so in my case, uh, there would be such a thing as too much. Absolutely. It's too much buzz. And that's for most people in general. You, you know, you ideally you come out of Therify feeling charged but not dizzy or ungrounded or buzzed. So symptom of too much is feeling buzzed, feeling ungrounded and feeling dehydrated. That is a symptom of too much. And there is absolutely such a thing as too much Therify. There's such a thing as too much Kundalini and there's such a thing as too much bliss. You know, it's good to inhabit a tornado, but you want to live inside a lightning bolt only for as long as <laughs> you can remain grounded. <laughs> now, that being said, 
uh, you know, the famous um, a friend from Greece and Paris who wrote the article on Therify and Lucid Dreaming. If you can absorb the spin, the charge of Therify, and hold that spin and remain grounded, uh, it should, among other things, uh, increase the rate of lucid dreaming. And it's good to speak about that because uh, that is an indicator of who will take memory through death, I believe. And the electrical engineering for that is very simple. It's not complicated. Uh, during the compression process, which is essentially what Therify is, implosive compression, both for the glands and the DNA in the blood, the squeezing, just like wringing out a slinky, means that during the squeezing process, the electromagnetic inertia of the body is converted from the more indirect transverse EMF, up and down waves, into the far more penetrating, what's called longitudinal or scalar, which is longitudinal EMF coherence. And that longitudinal EMF coherence, which comes out of the center of the pine cone at the Planck threshold, it's literally what squeezed out the toothpaste tube, that is the stuff of the lucid dream of what you take with you through death, what is called Kesjan body, rainbow light body, the Ba from the Ka, many names, but the physics is quite clear. It is longitudinal coherence. And when you make that stuff in your aura, the more bliss you can handle, you begin to inhabit that larger array. Remember, you inhabit a, an array now. It's called your synapses. It's a bunch of sparks, and you inhabit the array. And the reason that array works to make you conscious is because a tornado inhabits the center. That's called consciousness. Well, in the lucid dream and at death, and when you remote view, and when you astral travel, you propagate that array into a bigger array, which is the longitudinal nodes around you, the sacred sites of the earth grid, for example, song line, dreaming track, collective unconscious, many names for the coherence of the longitudinal array, which is the substance of ancestor memory. So for example, when the kids who use the same frequencies that we're discussing, flameandmind.com and Iris is doing that work, when those kids start seeing without their eyes, often, they go into that trans bliss state, the same harmonics as Therify, and they can then see without their eyes. Iris is be doing beautiful work. Often those same kids become clairvoyant to the extent that they begin seeing their ancestors. In the East, they take that as normal. In the West, it freaks out the parents. But the physics is instructive. The reason they start seeing their ancestors is because they're inhabiting the longitudinal array, which is where ancestral memory lives and what you must inhabit if you die successfully. So, in fact, you need that squeezing effect, which is what a successful death is. And Therify is an introduction. And the fact that Therify pre frequently helps people to lucid dream is a wonderful indicator of that physics. So once a week, 30 minutes, uh, <laughs> twice a week, every day. What, what, what is your... What, what, <laughs> give, give us something, because you're, you're very good in explaining everything. But um, as you start working with it, um, I, it is all about... Uh, try yourself but is there something you can share with us in in the starting frequency on i'm healthy so i can start training myself uh more on that on the lucid, lucid dreaming on um at a contact with my higher self or bigger self whatever you call it what is the frequency you would recommend well thank you start I, with <laughs> in my personal case uh I use Therify when my body tells me I need it, which sometimes is several times a week, and often I will go weeks without. Uh, but actually, your body's yearning, whether you call it Therify, Therify or whether you call it a sacred site, the physics is the same. What the body yearns for is a place of compression. I happen to have a place right here in my living room where the magnetic line comes from the Kanagu Sacred Mountain. And if I turn off all the gadgets in the room and lie still on this bed, I can feel I can look down that magnetic line beautifully and recharge my body dependably anytime I want. So I, I don't feel I need Therify a lot of the time because I know how to recharge my body on a sacred magnetic line. And I think every human being should understand how to use uh, you know, they're, they're what Costain had called their PowerPoint. And Therify is one example of a PowerPoint, but I'm not saying everyone needs a gadget. This is not just a sales pitch. <laughs> no, the physics is that if you have access to sacred sites or any place of good charge, 
you should not need a Therify, even though, you know, I'm the inventor and maybe I make money when we sell it. That doesn't matter. I'm telling you the truth. If you have the proper access to places of, of charge, the place, for example, Karatkov proved telepathy is replicable, you know, where magnetic lines cross. So yes, Therify can help you to get there and it's very useful and use it as many times as your body tells you you need it. But I don't think there's any general rule here. Yeah, clear. Hey, and um, um, we this the durability of the bulb uh, and going on using it every day uh, with with people that need to be healed. So you have five clients a day. That means five times a half an hour, or maybe uh, six hours on a day that is being used. What well, what is your recommendation? Because the first talk we had was, you know, do this cycle of of nine minutes and six minutes, so it has a rest. Um, so we have two questions here: is the durability of the bulb, and of course, wanting to help people a bit more, um, a bit more structurally, and then let it go. Yes, um, very appropriate question. Uh, first of all, the bulbs only generally have needed a recharge after some years of very intense use. And the recharge swap function that we offer, it's in the area of three to 500 per bulb. It's actually been made reasonable and it's easy because they can ship the new before they ship the old. And that recharge swap, you know, I have two Therify systems out for six years, never needed one. Uh, but it's true that if the system is used, you know, a dozen times a day and 50 or 100 times a week, then after a year or two, some of the more busy centers need the recharge swap function, a few hundred dollars a bulb. Now, and how do you see that is needed? Well, but if you get a uh, more than a little uh, discoloration goes from pink toward yellow, actually, if the discoloration. And that uh, generally probably even would not happen at all uh, unless the bulbs get quite warm. And this is why, why I'm mentioning this, because if your environment is relatively cool, I, I, I don't think a half hour session is ever any kind of a problem. However, if the environment is quite warm in that room, some people are using fans on the bulb, which I recommend between sessions, sometimes if they're warm, but not during sessions. Uh, but um, it, it's true that if the bulb gets very warm, then that tends to acceleration accelerate uh, the decay of the stability of the noble gas. And again, uh, only if it's very hot and only in case of very, very heavy use. So normally, as in my case, my Therify, five to seven years, never needed to recharge ever, and they're fine. But centers that use them... You use full time or you do the pauses? No. Yeah, well, you know, we have three or five, 10 sessions a week, maybe. But no, we're we're a light use situation here, yeah. honestly. So okay, I'm not... I'm yeah, not sorry. the best example. Yeah, can you explain uh, what the difference is between the purple light of the violet ray and the orange light of the Terrify? Why, what is the difference? What is the effect? Well, the recipe for the noble gases in the Therify is technically confidential. But if you know anything about noble gases, you will know that the largely purple uh, uh, neon argon is dominant. Uh, Krypton would be nice, but it's pricey. <laughs> uh, and so the, the the colors of the noble gases are well known. So it cannot be a secret what the noble gases are, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. Point is the noble gases in general optically do emit a phase conjugate optical series. That is true. And in purple, it would normally be the dominant color. And if that moves more toward uh, yellow, uh, orange is okay, but if it moves more toward yellow, it tends to indicate that gas is destabilizing slightly, actually. Oh, but I see the terrifies orange. Yeah. Well, it's orange, deep. purple is <laughs> how you see it. We've only and, seen it orange. Yes. Yeah, well, if, it, it depends if... The, if the lighting in the room is low, <laughs> it'll be orange, purplish. It depends how you look at it, but but that, that's normal. I I think uh, when I looked at it, I saw like the outside looked a bit more purple, and the inside uh, a bit more orange. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. In the dark. Yeah, in the dark. Yeah. You see it better. Um, than that, sure. Yes. People from uh, on a digital screen, are there any questions? Daniel and partner there. Um, Patrick, of course, is the expert. Uh, Giselle, Britt, 
and someone just came in. Any questions? Yeah, I I uh, wrote in the chat about half an hour ago because we're sitting uh, in a room where we have a verified. So maybe it's an idea if people are interested that I switch the webcam to the other side and turn it on. <laughs> sure, if you're... And we can share the experience. <laughs> Okay. And also, I don't know the name of the person that's live in track that was also dealing with sound therapy, because that's also one of my areas that I'm active in. So we could do like a little session if it's appreciated. I don't know. Daniel, that's an offer to Peter, uh, the person who talked about uh, sound. I mean, right now, I mean, if I turn it on, I can also sing a little bit. It doesn't have to. Oh yeah, please do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just for a couple minutes, just a couple minutes. I'm really sure it's not a, but not a, not a concert. Yeah. Great, okay. That's Maybe in the meantime, that. I can ask a question then. Go ahead. Um, Go ahead. In, in winter, when the room is not so warm and people need to stay comfortable uh, on the bed between the lamps, what kind of material would you suggest to cover them with? Like a, 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 a thin blanket? made out of wool or cotton or hemp or what material would be best like to make people comfortable when it's cold? Oh, oh, oh that's beautiful. Thanks for turning it on, Daniel. Yes, you, you, it's gorgeous, Daniel. <laughs> um, uh, just br briefly, Iris, uh, I would recommend a non-fuzzy, uh, thin, um, and hemp is better than wool, uh, uh, cotton is okay, but thin and not thick fuzzy because thick fuzzy dissipates the capacitance. So natural material and enough to keep them warm, but no thicker than necessary. And hemp is better, obviously. And wool is not so good because it tends to um, distort the aura. That's beautiful. And you're right. See how that looks a little orange, purple. It depends how you look. It's gorgeous. Thank you. Daniel, can you maybe turn out off the lights in your room? Then we can... Yeah. I think even it's better. Uh, oh yeah, that's better already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> well, it looks very different live actually than on the webcam. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, and we can feel it. We can feel it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah because that's a nice thing, and eh, it works on a distance as well. Yes. It looks so, like it's nicely set up there. Nicely set up. Beautifully done. Yeah, we have it now for like three weeks in operation at our home to try out and experiment with it. So nice. Daniel, you work with sounds added to Terrify? Yeah, well, I, I did some uh, 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 course in uh, sound-based sound healing with the, using your voice. And it's also working with overtones, you know, but it's a different harmonic series, of course, than the golden ratio, but it works also. <laughs> That's the using their own voice harmony yeah and it's actually it's also quite broad spectrum so i thought you know while you were talking maybe it's nice to do a little a few sounds together with the field of the okay. that you see in the in the back sure natural just, yeah um, natural overtones nice yeah. go ahead we we look at the sunset at the moment and we see similar colors as uh, the terrify yeah the timing <laughs> nice okay Oh, it's difficult. Nice. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Daniel. Thanks, Daniel. <laughs> we could feel your energy. It's nice. It's it's amazing how global meditations have been powerful with Therify as well. It is a very shareable. When more than one is on, you can feel it, even around the world. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So maybe now my mic is on, I can ask you a little question. Uh, also for Sylvia, uh, I was wondering, uh, where are you when the lamps are on? Because this, the field is pretty intense, especially if you are like the more electromagnetically sensitive person. So if you want to help a client and you want to, you know, uh, be present, how close are you to the to the system? Do you go out of the room? Do you walk a few meters away? Or what, how do you approach it? I was curious. 
Uh, I make sure the client is relaxed or comfortable or that they need something uh, or yeah, have questions. And then when they are relaxed, I give them a mask so they are yeah, tuned inside. And then I ask if they need some music or not. And then I leave the room. So I come back after the time is up and then I wake them up slowly and uh, most of the people are gone. Uh, and I had one one girlfriend and she speaks light language and in the plasma field she, she got a, a visit of a guide she didn't know and she started to speak uh, light language in a different way she didn't do before so she was quite amazed that this happened in the plasma field so yeah that's a wonderful I have many great stories what people <laughs> experience but I yeah I leave them alone so they are in their own uh, energy yeah, that's good. In fact, we have found that if there's too many people in the room, people don't relax well. Yeah, and the, true, true. the other physics here is that um, if you're a kind of professional therapist, um, if you do too many sessions, uh, the symptom of too much exposure is dehydration. Even some have seen a little lumps in their skin where the so dehydration does result from too much exposure. So yes, we do suggest that a therapist doing many sessions do exactly as you say, you help the person get relaxed and comfortable and then gently step away uh, so that you don't have too much exposure. Exactly. So what is your rhythm then in that sense, uh, Sylvia, well, for treatment and repeating? Is that one week, two week, a month? Uh, normally, yeah, it's also a financial thing, of course, that not everybody can come three times a week or every week. So I just ask what is possible. And then mostly they come every two weeks mm. or once a month if it's not uh, possible for because I also do other things combined. So it's not only the therapy. So it's and 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 with financial things, of course, but mostly, yeah, I say once in two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and only if you're treating something that's really intense, maybe you need more. But it sounds like your approach is very, very sensible, very sensible. Great. Well, this is wonderful. And Daniel, thank you so much for your song and your, your inspiring light there. <laughs> any, any other questions? You know, an idea that came up while you were talking. So, yeah. Thank you. Is there? So this is the last call, I think, for wrapping it up. Um, Sylvia... Yes talked already about Aquira and Hans van Mosel, the voice analysis. That is something that uh, Sylvia will share with us as well in another um, um, moment in time with this um, series that we are putting on. Um, so we'll come back to that, the voice uh, analyzer uh, from Aquira, Hans van Mosel. Um, is there um, I'll give the mic to Iris and then let's see if there's still any questions from anyone. Yeah, one more. Yeah, vo voice analysis yeah. is appropriate and very relevant. Hello, Here. Dan. Here I am again. Um, yes. You, you talk about Alzheimer, people with Alzheimer. What was the positive results with people with Alzheimer? Um, yes, originally it was uh, Dr. Thomas, I believe, in Paris, who had an older lady who reported dramatically helping that lady with Alzheimer's. That was in the, in the early years. And then um, here, uh, Valerie's friend, um, older lady, I won't mention her name, but uh, she was notably more coherent even in the hours just after several times. Uh, and there are many stories like that. Uh, I would believe that... Uh, you know, if we had been able to keep doing those sessions a couple times a week for two to three weeks, but her friend could only visit once or twice total, uh, we would have had longer term effect. In the end, we were able to help her for a few days, but not a few months, but it, longer term treatment. But then also, uh, obviously, uh, if you combine things like Therify Plasma with dietary things, which are somewhat well known for Alzheimer's, including uh, you know, the gut microbiome and gut microbiome, obviously, it's directly related. It's proven for autism and therapy is also very helpful with gut microbiome and autism by anecdotal report. And the reasons obviously related because gut microbiome is related to charge circulation. So, you know, you, you zap that implosion. 
there's a wonderful new television documentary in the Gaia series about gut microbiome and aut autism. And we have a specialist, Kate Forbes, you can find it on our Therify blog page, about gut microbiome and Therify. And that has a lot to do with, with the Alzheimer's as well. So there's many, obviously, cofactors related to Alzheimer's. But we have been able to help, anecdotally, quite a few people in many cities by reports. Okay, thank you. So uh, this has been so much fun. Uh, thank you, Iris, for ben, being Ben, you, you said the importance of Aquira. Maybe that's also nice to just shortly give an opinion on that. Well, you? yes. Well, um, we you know if you look at goldenmean.info slash harmonics, you see we work with for years with uh, Mary Soul Biosonica in Spain, who was also dealing with autism using a voice spectrum analyzer. And I also knew Sherry Edwards and Dan Kunkel, the other inventors of voice spectrum analyzer software. So I have a long history of involvement. And Patrick would have a comment too with his great expertise in the Tomatis system. But the short summary is harmonic inclusiveness in the voice absolutely correlates to everything we've been talking about. So when you do voice analysis and look for what harmonics are missing and then replace those harmonics, which implosive harmonics, which is exactly what Therify Infrasound is and exactly what the flameandmind.com flame and sound software does with the world's most powerful bliss binaural. So all these things fit together perfectly. Voice analysis is a very appropriate use. In fact, I would suggest that if you look now at that page I told you, the therify.net, how it works page, and you see that low frequency sound cascade, and you play that and do the voice analysis, you should find those harmonics then reappear actually in voice analysis. Because as Tomat as well said, if you cannot hear it, you cannot speak it. And that harmonic inclusiveness re directly relates to stored trauma. So there's a beautiful and long and gorgeous conversation about missing harmonics equal missing memory. It's it's beautiful. It's and again it's harmonic inclusiveness. So voice analysis is a very relevant tool here. Okay, then I have some uh short practical questions. Uh you you said it would it's best not to wear synthetic uh clothing. Absolutely. Yes, um, correct. And also to remove any metals. Yes. So that would mean your belt. Um, that it's would possible. mean your earrings and uh, old jewelry. Yes, Is pretty it... much. Yes, yes. Also copper? Um, well, you know, a little bit can be nice. But in general, as much metal. But if it's a pain to get it off, well, then don't worry about it. But generally, if it's easy to remove, yes, as much metal as possible should be removed. Yes. Because that's going to attract the negative ion wind. And yeah. we get the, the negative ion cloud at that point. So, would it is it only important uh, for um, uh, the, the person that's lying between the lamps, or does this go for the whole room? Would it be better not to have like metal can? Uh, how do you say that? Candeliers or whatever lamps or? Yes, um, particularly everything within a few meters of the plasma tubes uh, is far better to remove synthetics and metal, absolutely. For example, a big metal cabinet too close to those plasma tubes, it's gonna damp that plasma cloud. In yeah. fact, there's a lady who did a big study on this on negative ion wind therapy, and she was healing things like spinal meningitis with negative ion wind, and Therify is just a big negative ion wind. And she proved if the room's full of synthetics and metal, it just doesn't work. It's, it's the technical term is is dielectric constant. You need an environment which serves charge distribution efficiency. And so polyester, bad dielectric constant and uh, and metal, it, it grounds the, the charge. So it, the same thing that'll prevent your local elementals and your your orbs is the same thing that it allows therify and negative ion wind to work. Yeah, the metals in the body, we already talked about that a little bit, um, like with uh, stainless steel, for example, in, implants. And so far, I think the experience is that people don't have like any negative. Um... Yes, it, it's true that titanium is less destructive to body capacitance than stainless steel for implants. And uh, because it's more... Uh, 
suitable for charge distribution efficiency named dielectric constant. So, uh, you know, things inside your body do affect circulation. That's why people, spiritual people, go to a great deal of trouble to remove metal implants in their spine, for example. Yeah. Aluminium. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I had a question because, we, of course, there are a lot of toxins also in the air being um, uh, with the geoengineering programs and these very fine nanoparticles also with metals. Um, do, do you know how um, these metals react to a plasma field? Like, for example, I, I've seen videos where they have, I, I think it was graphene oxide next to a, a cellular phone and it did something like to the graphene oxide. Do, do you have any idea about all that, like the toxins that we receive just from being outside or? Uh... Yeah, well, it, it, it's obvious, for example, they measured the amount of the aluminum in the Pacific Northwest of USA in the soil from the, the, the jet trails. And it's not even just conspiracy. It's just the fact that there's a lot of aluminum in jet trails in general. And the amount of the aluminum in that so soil is enough to destroy agriculture for generations, actually. It's, yeah. it's it's tragic. It's absolutely tragic, the amount of aluminum that has landed on the soil of USA and modern Western countries. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the Therify is going to be helpful to some extent wherever there is plasma implosion, it tends to self-sort and spit out, literally eject, that which cannot serve charge concentration. But, uh, and that's why, for example, it is said that um, carbon nanomaterials, uh, they form a kind of a plating system, and eventually that dielectric is sort of like a radio, and carbon nano, uh, like they call it black goo, this is a DNA rate. This is a telemetry used by the Borg. You know, it is true. It's real. You can study the black goo stories on our website. And to some extent, Therify will help break up uh, carbon uh, nanomaterials, even in the blood, to some extent. And there are stories of people who actually survived the black goo with enough literally human bliss. So if you get enough implosion, you can deal with pretty much anything. But, it, you know, you need to be able to actually build the discipline to withstand, withstand that kind of bliss to handle it. So this is a big story. Okay. Yeah, thank you. And uh, my last question is, um, you also spoke about the importance of grounding. Yes, um, mm -hmm. especially afterwards the session. Yes. Of, uh, yeah, no, would then also be like a grounding sheet on the on the bed of the terrify be an idea? Um, yes. Uh, first, we we should emphasize here that uh, grounding is essential to restore the body centripetal force after the terrify plasma. However. The floating plasma cloud that is Therify itself means that you must not and cannot touch ground while the Therify is on. Uh, no. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's very clear. Yeah, it's, it's very clear. So yes, you want grounding afterwards, but not during because you're going to get a little, a little spark. And by the way, an example of that is if you put the metal amplifier too close to the plasma tube, it's going to implode the, the plasma cloud and the metal amp is going to get warm and give you a little static shock. So that tells you you got that metal amp too close to the plasma tube. So you, you want to avoid ground yeah. during the session and you need natural ground after the session and okay. hydration. Yes. Thanks. Okay, the la really the last one. What would be like the ideal um, environment or surrounding for the Therify? I I imagined like this um, granite um, cave, for example. Would that be a good idea to put a, a Therify in, inside a granite cave? Well, our entire curriculum on what is bio biologic architecture, natural materials, merely means that high dielectric constant, meaning charge distribution efficiency, defines all of life. Actually, that defines biologic architecture. So, for example, we know that uh, Eddie Sharpless's Therify Center in Northern California, they know there's 
sacred stones and woods all over the place there. And his center is famous. You know, they've got elementals. And, you know, if you so basically the short summary is if you got a lot of nature around, it's wonderful. And if it's only ugly urban city, well, try to keep, create an island of life force. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, they, yes. And it's true that certain caves would, would be fabulous. It's true. Uh, you know, Jesus in the cave, it's a real story. <laughs> Um, then my son of 33 has used the um, the terrifying twice, and he uh, came out with a very severe headache. So is this um, um, uh, the, your classic of saying not only uh, uh, yeah detox I think is one of the reasons, but also dehydration. Is this also an example of too much and and too intense use for someone? Yeah, it, it's true. Um, uh, symptoms of dehydration include headache. Basically, uh, <laughs> until you get used to Kundalini, it's a big headache. <laughs> uh, then when you learn how to ground it, and you see, the headache is basically telling you your body has gotten the plasma cloud to a certain level and can't let the implosion go to completion. So if there were lessons in deep breathing and hydration and grounding, and this was done very gradually, it's the same as Kundalini. If it's onset is too quick, it's going to be a big headache, actually. And the headache is related to detox. So this is a fairly complicated question. But yes, lack of... Very clear also. Yeah, lack of deep breathing, a lack of grounding, and lack of hydration would be probably the most major logical correlates. A lot of people, says Peter, don't have a grounding, grounding, um, and and even to give them the grounding eh, or the understanding of what is a grounding is quite um, a job. What is your advice on that? You're asking. Yes, well, um, you know, people that live in cities and walk in thick rubber sneakers, they get very ungrounded pretty quickly. <laughs> Uh, it, 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 you know, the book Earthing is the classic example. Uh, but if you get access to walk on, you know, walk in the park with thin or no shoes and clothing is biologic material, deep breathing, it, swimming in any kind of living water is fabulous for that. That's just the, the it's the best. Yeah. Um, you have another question, Harry? Hopefully we, we've, we've done the happily ever after here. <laughs> okay, okay, great. What about autoimmune diseases? Is there a special um, experience, people with different kinds of autoimmune diseases? How um, well does it work for them? And do they really have to believe before it works? <laughs> yeah, I, I think the conversation about gut microbiome is a wonderful place to start understanding autoimmune diseases actually and there's a wonderful uh new book it's called um missing microbes uh, by one of the former directors of the medical association of america very powerful and they're realizing that you know uh, uh antibiotics and uh, cesarean births destroyed the gut microbiome of a whole generation and therefore the immune system of a whole generation of kids oh yeah i mean they did, did you say cesarean yeah absolutely they measured so what is what is happening with cesarean can you please repeat they measured the death of the gut microbiome after they correlated cesarean to autism and in both cases uh, restored gut microbiome they have documented many cases of of helping with autism dramatically as there are many you know anecdotal reports of therify helping with autism as it, kate forbes also treats gut microbiome with therify so this is a whole conversation about what makes autoimmune autoimmune and autoimmune is another name for broad spectral neg entropy in my opinion Thank you very much. It's <laughs> opening up. <laughs> oh, hopefully that was a happily ever after. Thank I, you. I think a lot of people are not aware of the effect of cesareans. Uh, yeah, they yeah. actually use, they take uh, fibers and they put it in the womb of the mother and they coat the infant with the, with the, with the liquid of the mother's womb to try to get the mother's womb liquid around the baby and literally measure 
restoration of gut microbiome in that baby. And they do, you know, fecal implants also. The, the story of the gut microbiome is a beautiful study. Uh, the death of the gut microbiome is the death of civilization. Yes. So, Harriet, do some That's work. Another it's subject, another important. day. Yeah, another day. <laughs> but thank no, you. No, it's not another day. But um, uh, it's good to, uh, if you work with people in hospitals or as uh, such, then it's nice to make people aware of this. That's right. Disastrous uh, intervention. Yes. Yeah, the cesarean is a it is a disaster. Personal intervention. Yeah, um, it's personal opinion. It's a disaster for for civilization in general. The lack of mothering, lack of bonding, the bond of power, the whole thing. Yeah, it's it's remothering 101, John Diamond, placental extract, belly of the surrogate mother, deep breathing, tetany, restore the bond. It's called the bond of power. <laughs> so on that note, I yeah. say thank you. We had yeah, fun. Yeah, thank you very much, Dan. Happy to share. It's been wonderful again. <laughs> Blessing. Yeah. Blessings. Nice to meet everybody oh, there. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, so thank you very much, Dan. This was the kickoff of a series of four. Look on the website, Metal Catedral, and the program. Um, if you are a healer or interested in healing and becoming aware of the atrocities in uh, a chemical, I, I today I learned alchemy that they sort of skipped the word L. <laughs> and uh, my God, why would you ever do that? Um, so thank you very much for this wonderful start. Thank you for the audience and this great contribution. It will be possible to see it hereafter um thank you yeah You're see you soon wonderful group there metal cathedral thank you bless <laughs> we love you dan thanks love very you much guys. see you again <laughs> soon blessings blessings bye-bye bye thanks very much <laughs>